If there's one thing I think that we can all agree about about the Toronto real estate market is there is never really a dull moment. And even in the dog days of summer with the August stats coming out, there's still a lot of things that I think are super interesting. So what I'm gonna do in this video is break down the top 10 things that I pulled out of the market data. I'm not just gonna go through the data with you. I'm actually gonna pull out these little tidbits that I think will be useful for any consumer, buyer or seller that's thinking about getting into the market or potentially selling a property in the next 12 months. My name is Tom Story and I'm the team leader here at the Story Team and we sell real estate in Toronto. If you wanna book a buyer consultation, a seller consultation, or just a chat about real estate with me, you can go right onto the contact page of my website and book in a time that works for you. So let's get right into it. Here are the 10 things about the Toronto real estate market that I think you need to know. Okay, we will start with the average sale price. So when we look at the average sale price for August, it was just under $1.1 million. That's a year over year change of about 12%. Now the 40 year average for the Toronto Real Estate Board is actually about 7% a year. So we've been outpacing that average in the last little while. And since the pandemic started, housing has been in high demand. Now I do think as we head into September and the end of the year with kids going back to school and just more things to do, less people are gonna be obsessive over real estate and our sales number should cool down a little bit. Point number two is there is currently less than one month of inventory on the market. So what does that mean? That means that if, if right now no new listings came on the market, everything that's available for sale in all of Toronto would sell out in under a month. Now I've talked about months of inventory before on this channel and what we do at the end of every single month and we can take for specific pockets of the city or in this instance, it's the entire marketplace is we go, okay, how many active listings were there and how many sales happened? You divide active listing by sales, it gives you a month of inventory number. So we're currently sitting at like 0 0.9 months of inventory. Anything under three is a seller's market, hence why we've seen a 12% year over year price increase from four to six is a balanced market and six plus is a buyer's market. The third fact I think is really interesting is that the condo market has fully bounced back and there is no denying it. We now fully know that back in October of 2020 was the absolute bottom of the condo market. If you had bought a condo in October 2020, you're probably up over six figures at this point based on what you purchased then and what condos are trading for right now. Because your average condo price right now is about $720,000. In February of 2020, which was the peak before, we were about $725,000. However, buying a condo right now, your mortgage rate is going to be a lot lower than it would have been in February 2020. So the condo market did not have a good 2020. I think that's very clear to most people. The bottom was October and we have now fully bounced back. We're up almost 14% from January 1st. Now, number four, and I think this is where it gets interesting. We're going to look at how many sales there were. So there's 8,596 sales in August. Now that's 20% less sales than the year before. However, it was still the third largest August in history. So what I think is kind of funny when I see articles saying that the real estate market has cooled down this summer, they were all comparing it to March and April, which is unfair. It's like picking certain months of the year when we had the highest amount of sales that we've ever seen and comparing it to that. This is the third largest August of all time. It's not so much a cool down market, it's just not as crazy as it was earlier in the year in March and April. So here's when we dig a little bit deeper. The new listings were actually down 43% year over year. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is though, we had 20% less sales happen August to August, but listings were down 43%. So there's that 20 something percent delta of difference there. So actually more properties sold based on what was available this year than compared to last year. The absorption of the inventory coming onto the market was actually happening quicker even compared to last year when we had 20% more sales. So that's kind of interesting. And now we're gonna jump into the condo market. So the condo market is always a hot topic and I just talked about how the condo market had fully bounced back. But something interesting is actually only 6% of condo sales actually sold over a million dollars. So a good chunk of condo sales, actually about 70 to 75% of the market is happening under $700,000. So you wonder why condos are moving so fast and why they're coming back and why you know there's a lot of demand for them right now is because straight up it's affordability people don't love buying condos in edmonton or calgary or even montreal or halifax but they love buying them in toronto and vancouver do you know why because they are more affordable than all the other asset classes and to get to that house that you want down the road you got to get in the market first ride the wave and then jump up that property ladder when it makes sense to you now, as we dive even deeper into the sales number, here's one that's really interesting. 
only 0.5% of all the properties that sold were over $2 million. So the luxury market represented less than 1% of the entire market of Toronto. Now, lots of properties sold from $1 million to $1.5 million, and a whole heck of them sold under a million dollars, but only 0.5% sold over $2 million. Now, if you compare this to other cities around the world, this percentage is much lower based on the quality of life and all the great things that we can do here in Toronto. It truly is a world-class city. Now, let's dig one deeper here. 57% of all listings that sold, remember there was over 8,000 properties that sold in August, sold under $1 million. So there are still opportunities out there. And I was actually looking this morning, I was curious to see how many freehold properties in the city of Toronto were available under a million dollars that didn't have an offer date, meaning that their price was truly their price. And I found a list of a hundred of them. So even though they are few and far between these days, they do exist and being creative with your search will find you opportunities. Now they might need a little bit of TLC, or a little bit of renovations, but there are properties that exist under a million dollars. In fact, 57% of all the properties that sold in August were under a million dollars. Now we've got two stats left, and number nine is that condos represented about 30% of all the sales that happened. Now, here's what, how I look at the condo market. The condo market is great for three different types of people. First time home buyers, you're getting that affordable condo. Your typical downsizer, you want that older condo, but with a bigger floor plan, or that luxury market, it services all three. If you wanna buy a freehold property, well, you start with a million dollars, as we just talked about. So condos represented about 30% of the market. Uh, detached were still over 40% of the market, but condos eating up that big chunk of where purchases are coming from. And we will finish it with the gap between condos and detached properties. So if you look at the average price point, it was still almost a million dollar gap. Now, before the pandemic, this gap was about $700,000. So when we try to figure out what could potentially happen in the future, what we typically will do is look to the past. And the last time we saw this type of gap, condos went up about 30% that, that following year. Now, is that going to happen? Probably not to that level, but condos had one less year of growth compared to all the other asset classes. All the other asset classes went up extremely high in 2020 where condos fell 10%. Now, they've caught back up to where they were, but they still have a long way to go. And that gap that used to be $700,000 is now a million dollars. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some value from this video today. As always, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Check out storyteam.ca to book an appointment with me. Follow us on Instagram at the storyteam. And remember, home is where your story begins.